Are you looking to get better at dogfighting? Do you want to learn a secret trick that'll win them for you? Well, using differential thrust definitely won't do that, but this video will explain all about what it will do. This video is sponsored by the GE for War Thunder app. We all know that the War Thunder economy is tough. Sometimes you're so close to getting the modification your vehicle needs to become competitive, but it costs just a bit too much in Silver Lions. With the Golden Eagles for War Thunder app, you can earn Golden Eagles for completely free, making sure that both your wallet and virtual wallet remain unharmed. To get your Golden Eagles, download the GE for War Thunder app in the description below. You can use my referral code to get additional Golden Eagles without any extra steps. There's a common misconception about splitting the throttles, and that's that using it can give you a non-insignificant advantage over your adversary in a dogfight. Using this tactic as intended provides, to simplify things, more yaw. Split throttle uses thrust rather than control surfaces to change the direction of the aircraft. It's the same principle as thrust vectoring, but a lot more simple in execution. Simplicity comes with drawbacks, however. Take for instance, a normal handgun is a very complex machine when compared to something like this. Thrust vectoring and manufactured firearms share a relative complexity. As a result, both can deliver a much finer degree of control than their makeshift counterparts. This difficulty in controllability can be overcome with practice, however. As such, the first objective downside to using thrust vectoring without the vectoring is that you're not able to keep full power to both engines. When you split the throttles, you're giving the plane less thrust in total. Seems like a fairly redundant statement to have to make, but it's essential to understand this when trying to apply differential thrust to a combat environment. Namely, why it's not always a good idea. A plane needs energy if it's going to be dogfighting, and the more it can conserve, the more it can do. The energy maneuverability theory is a theory that essentially conveys that an aircraft's performance is reliant on its energy state. Take the F-16 for example here. It was designed with this in mind and turned out to be one of the best dogfighters. And out of the aircraft in War Thunder, the best. So in short, most cases where you may think splitting the throttles would be useful, it would probably be more useful to keep both engines fully powered to preserve your energy. So even if with that knowledge you want to learn how to use differential thrust, Here's the actual tutorial part of the video. War Thunder still, as of July 2023, does not let you set an axis to control each individual engine's throttle. So what you have to do instead is find the binds in the manual engine control section called first engine controls and second engine controls. It probably won't have a bind set already, so that's where you get to choose what to set it as. There isn't an objectively best keybind for this, so your choice is entirely down to preference. For my setup, I use the two side buttons on my mouse for ease of reach. Now one thing to note is that in most cases when you want to use differential thrust, your engines are going to already both be on full burner. To make splitting the throttles easy to learn, set your keybinds to the opposite turning direction. For example, if you want to make your left arrow key turn the plane left, set it to the second engine controls. Now all you have to do is press left arrow and throttle down. And really, that's all there is to it. While you can use manual engine control and mouse aim, if you want to use this technique aggressively, I would recommend that you use full reel. The virtual instructor will otherwise try and automatically correct the asymmetrical thrust by applying opposite rudder. When you want to return power to both engines, don't throttle up. Instead, simply press the same engine control button again. This will instantly set the engine back to full power. You may have noticed that this video has featured a lot of the F-14, and that's for a good reason. You can split the throttles on any aircraft as long as it has more than one engine, props included, but out of all, the F-14 sees the most benefit from it because of its spaced engines. The farther an engine is from its aircraft's center line, the more yaw force it can generate. So with the F-14B, it can generate plenty. As such, it's important to use differential thrust in moderation. It's usually enough to just take the engine off of burner and keep it on 100%. Having too much thrust on one side of the aircraft can get out of hand very quickly. 
I've already gone over how splitting the throttles is largely impractical in dogfights. It's got a very slim set of scenarios in which it'll actually work, which is akin to the Cobra. So now I'll show you instances where this is actually really helpful and really practical. First is spin recovery. Just like how splitting the throttles can get you into a spin, it can get you out of it. Providing power to the engine opposite to the spin's direction is a great way to return to flight if your plane is damaged that prevents you from recovering aerodynamically. Second is stall assistance. When you keep your nose pointed straight up, there's only a matter of time before the aircraft succumbs to the forces of gravity. Most aircraft generally tend to oscillate a bit on their way down, and some more than others. One thing you can do to make sure your plane comes out of a stall gracefully is to do a hammerhead maneuver. But when the rudder isn't enough to flip the plane over, that's when the engine's coming to help. The last thing that split throttle is practical for is, well, just looking cool. There are a multitude of different maneuvers you can do just for the sake of aerobatics. In the Tomcat, you can use differential thrust to perform maneuvers that are known to only be done by thrust vectoring aircraft. So aside from its practical uses, I would say Split Throttle is mostly just a party trick. A very cool looking party trick. As always with any technique, the more you practice this, the more control you'll have over it. Before I conclude this video, I have a Patreon where I'll be posting works in progress as well as uploading full resolution and textless versions of my video thumbnails.